Hey, Akta. Hey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. You look. I'm gonna say something that everyone would be telling you. You don't look sick at all. <laughs> oh, everyone, everybody says that. You know. Well, you know, Aksa, the one thing that uh, brings us together, you and I specifically, is the fact that we both were diagnosed with juvenile lupus, right? Yeah. And you are seventeen now. Yes. And I turned twenty-two, so that's the difference. Uh, I was diagnosed in when I was fourteen. How old were you when you were diagnosed? I was diagnosed in two thousand eighteen. I was twelve or thirteen at that time. Oh. So yeah, I mean, approximately the same age, right? When he, I was thirteen. Yeah. Thirteen. Yeah. But I feel like in teenage years, uh, every every six months also make a difference, isn't it? So when you say twelve, yeah. when you say thirteen and fourteen, even though it's just like you may on the outside, it just looks like one year. It's still a huge. Uh, uh, it a makes grand. a huge. Difference. Yeah. How did you get to know you have lupus? Okay, so when I was diagnosed with lupus, I started like I had feet swell up and my face was swelling. My face was swelling up. So uh, my uncle told me to. I thought I had uh, that thyroid because my mom also had thyroid. So I thought it might be from genetics. So my uncle told me to go to the rheumatologist. Then we went and. He said that I have a uh, uh, lupus, and I didn't know what lupus was at that time. Yeah, that's such a oh my god! It it almost sounds like you're telling me my own story. <laughs> and I also didn't know. I was also I was just lying in the hospital. Like, what, what? Why am I not able to move? Why is everything hurting? Why am I swollen? And in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh no! Three weeks of school is past. How will I write all those notes? And those are the sort of thoughts I was having. while hmm. my life was at threat what were the thoughts in your head at that point honestly it ha- it was the same as you i was uh, recently diagnosed with uh, mononeuritis multiplex if you know uh, so because of that i didn't go to my school since three weeks and um, i was like i have to go to uh, school and i'm literally in bed since three weeks and i want to move and i without uh, and i was like um without without my help of mom i couldn't even move at that time i know aksa it's, it's the recent sorry not like back then yeah. it's the recent yeah. last yeah. month cast story are you saying even when you were 12 when you were diagnosed did you have those thoughts i i did right I, it was worse back then i know i think we've all in some way become very zen like you know that oh, okay now now we're not that uh, anxious but but i do get it I do get it. So, who told you you had lupus? Did they tell you, or did they tell you only gradually, or did they not tell you? No, my rheumatologist told me gradually after seeing my symptoms and everything. She told me I had lupus and I have to get the kidney biopsy done. So yeah, I got it gradually, and thankfully it was I got to know it at the early diagnosis. Right. Like uh, when you say kidney biopsy, did you? I'm, I'm guessing you never even heard that term, right? Biopsy. I know. Actually, you know what's the funny story? I thought lupus name was biopsy because my doctor was saying biopsy, biopsy, biopsy. I thought the disease is called as biopsy, not lupus. Then after two years, I got to know it's not biopsy; it's lupus actually. Oh boy, that is that that is But, innocence, right? That is innocence. Yeah. For two years, I thought the disease name is biopsy. <laughs> I couldn't pronounce uh, what my disease was. Did you know? I was like, I, I either I would say SLE or I would hmm. say oh, systemic lupus, erythematosus. No, took time. Even I still can't pronounce systemic <laughs> lupus as something something, and you know, I said I have lupus or I have SLE. <laughs> yeah, I still can't pronounce that. So I did not know you could call it lupus. So I was like, either I have to say SLE or you know, I was very confused then. So I so and I when I went to school around uh, I think when I was like fourteen, I think grade nine or something or grade eight, yeah, yeah, so I went to school and uh, so I was I was not allowed to uh, severe ban from the sun, right? UV ray. 
so i would uh, just tell everybody i have photosensitivity i did not know i had i mean i knew i had something serious because i could you could sense the situation at home like there's a genuine anxiety in everyone's face you know like oh my god this but at the same time i didn't know how to explain it to people so i would just say i have photosensitivity what did you tell your friends how yeah yeah how did you handle <laughs> First of all, I never told my friends I had lupus. Even some of my friends even still don't know I have lupus. So uh, I told my friends that I'm sick or something like that. I, I have like my feet are swelling up. So I told them that I'm really sick or I can't uh, play with them. So yeah, I I made some excuse, but I never said to them that I have lupus. Okay, if I may ask. Uh, hmm. was it a conscious choice ki nahi i don't want to tell them or was it like oh it's too much effort to explain the whole thing i'll just that was what it was with me so when i didn't tell my friends it was for me it was more like how am i going to explain that it's autoimmune and that your immune system attacks your body it was just like too much it was too chaotic so i was like i'm just going to cut it simple and say it's for the sensitivity why did you choose to not i'm curious to know Okay so at the early diagnosis when i was 12 i chose because of consciousness honestly because i didn't want it i thought they might think of me differently and um treat me as a patient and i didn't want it to be uh, i didn't want it to be like that so i told them that i'm sick or something like that but after that when i turned 14 or 15 after two years of lupus i said i didn't want to take tell them because of such a big story so i have both the reasons to not tell them great great makes sense makes but sense. now i can explain the whole thing when i when someone asks me wonderful what to have and why my joints are pain diagnosed uh, so obviously we all have this joint pain I, my my fingers were like this almost you know and i still yeah, <laughs> yeah i less hmm. i remember a neighbor telling me you're too young to have arthritis have you ever heard that did anyone ever tell you that same thing happened to me honestly <laughs> not my neighbor but some like some lady told me that you are too young to be like so big you literally act like a 80 year old lady oh at the age of 12 ha huh. and how would how would they impact you okay honestly if uh, someone tell me that okay, you are too young to be like uh, uh, too young to be that sick and why are you so sick at this young age why are you not active honestly i would explain my whole thing and i would tell them okay lupus is not something that you would get at an old age or an at an early age you can get it at any time yeah so i would explain my disease and like tell them ke it's not something that i would only get in old age or at the age of 60 or 70 i would in fact lupus is a disease uh, which we get at an early age absolutely it affects the youth in the most productive phases of their life that's my standard statement you know honestly i would explain my whole thing and like tell them that I have this disease because I, I'm actually not acting. I I have this disease. Uh, yeah. My parents knew uh, what lupus was, and my dad mm-hmm. was very well read up about autoimmune and rheumatoid arthritis. He had he already had that prerequisite knowledge. He knew it. So when I was sick, I couldn't move. It was unbelievable for people. You know, like I'm not able to move. Right? Like I'm just on the bed. I'm not eating. I'm losing weight. I'm immobilized. You know, you've also been through that. Um, I one of the I would say I'm very lucky because I never had to prove it to my parents that I'm sick. They always trusted me. And even after my diagnosis, like there were days I would just feel tired. That even I would doubt myself. I'm like, wait, am I lazy or am I fatigued? What is happening? But my parents would just tell me to go to sleep. I never had to prove it to them. Whereas. in school say for example sometimes i had to tell my teacher that mama i'm really unwell right now okay they didn't believe at first but after they knew that i had this disease even my teachers didn't know that there is something called lupus first yep so i had this disease so they like treated me well and uh, even they cared, uh, take care of me during the fever and and everything after that also So I had to prove to them. Then after that, they like 
take care of me and pamper me. Not pamper, actually. Be, but, be like, careful and considerate. Uh, parents of Joanna I. Lopez patients should just go tell the teachers and the principal, you know, that, that my child has so and so issue. Don't treat the child differently or don't discriminate. I don't treat them like a patient but at the same time be a little considerate and a little polite do you think that's important or should the parents not do that no no i think it's important to be uh, like if uh, sometimes if uh, the parents would tell the teachers the uh, the juvenile lupi or lupus folia would not like face the, uh, those problems if they first only tell the teachers or principal right when uh, when i saw other kids of my age like they are so energetic and hyped up and everything and here i am being so tired and i'm having fatigue so they would ask me that why are you walking so slow whenever i hanged out with my friends or something why are you walking so slow and why are you being so slow at everything so i explained that i can't do this I I'm having a leg I would ex- always give an excuse of leg pain or leg injury I don't know why but I always give an excuse of leg injury so like they understood it and after that after some time I told about I told my friends that I, I have lupus but at that time I used to give an excuse of like I have a leg injury and I'm really tired and I have to go home now Yeah so did you ever feel the this thing that should i just tell it to them because how many times will i keep telling them leg pain did you ever feel like okay now i'm just going to go tell them yeah i did when i was 14 i, I had i felt that i had i should tell my friends about this and I, i don't know how i'm going to hide it so i told my friends that i have lupus and i explained the whole thing to them like i have lupus it's an autoimmune disease and uh, we like have the symptoms that have, we have rashes and joint pains and everything then they reacted like oh my god yeah. post my diagnosis also the first one and a half year i was uh, i mean should i tell people uh, firstly i have not processed it myself i don't even know what i have you know we're too small for that and mm-hmm. and when i wanted to tell people one of my concerns was will i be boxed into that like will i be labeled as oh a patient and will i be treated differently did you have that concern yes i did uh, honestly i uh, even i today i'm scared to tell some people that i have lupus of because of this reason that i would be treated as patient or differently mm-hmm. so that why sometimes i'm scared to tell people that i have lupus but still yeah because i have to tell them that i have lupus to make them like uh, aware of it and uh, like to make them aware of it that i have this disease and like i i think for me since you're talking about the fear of that as being boxed or labeled or uh, limited that would be the word Uh I don't know if you've had a similar incident. I was around 15 and I was supposed to go to Germany for a student exchange program. And we cleared the interview round and all of that and uh, this is obviously after my diagnosis. And the moment we uh told them about lupus, uh it's only fair, it's only fair they must have had their concerns given I a young child with a, such a such a such a serious disease. So the moment they got to know that i had lupus uh i i didn't hear back from them you know and um i think it's the way my family ta- taught me to think i never thought it was a loss that i lost an opportunity i never felt that way and you know i think it's because of the fact that i didn't go there um that you know i, I could go found lupus trust in india eventually and uh, you know get the treatment also my health was anyway pretty bad at that point uh but did you ever feel that there was a you had to compromise there was always compromise did you ever feel that I compromise uh, i never felt that i had to compromise something uh, because of lupus but uh, yeah but uh, you know sometimes uh, we have to we might we might have to cancel some plans or um, we might we are because we are so tired and uh, so we might have to like uh, can cancel some enjoyments i guess or some trips and because of this uh, because of the lupus and tiredness we might not go out and enjoy that much so i guess makes sense sir makes sense 
Okay, uh, I have a question, Matches, for you. Yeah. That um, uh, what were the like challenges that you faced uh, during your juvenile lupus days? Okay, in juvenile lupus, uh, I think one of the major things I faced was uh, I I sort of did get isolated from people my age. I started uh, hanging out with people way older than me. Oh. Uh, yeah i don't think that's a challenge but the challenge was i couldn't relate to people my age uh i i felt that gap uh, you know and i was i got a little more existential you know what i mean right like we tend to question the purpose of life or you know these doubts happen so i think that was one of the the, the juvenile lupus challenge and of course transitioning from juvenile lupus to an adult which i want to ask you because you're also going to be an adult very soon and uh Uh, it's a different ball game because you are from being a dependent you're trying to learn to pick life together on your own you want to catch a cab to your college on your own or you want to learn to you know drive i had cataracts in my eye right and a uh, steroid induced so i wanted yes. to learn driving very small goals but was very challenging with the health that we have right but that brings me to the next question for you you know um There was this point where you told me how suddenly you were like, "Hey, you know what? I don't have to hide the disease. I'm just going to tell people, right?" And you yes, yes. That point. And how was the support? Like, did you get support, or was there any discrimination that you felt? Uh, was it bittersweet uh-huh. or all good? How was it? It was uh, also the discrimination and uh, also the support from some people. Like I had some friends which supported me and like uh, take care of me and understood me. But there I faced discrimination at some point. Like uh, some they might not tell me when they are like uh, going out because they might they think that I might not cough that much or I might get tired of it. That's why I faced a discrimination of a little bit, but not that much. right aksa i know it might sound like a small discrimination but i'm sure mm-hmm. it had its impacts no because uh, you also want to be included how did you handle that okay i was really small at that time i was only 12 or 13 so yeah i like i never i was really first of all i was really insecure at that age like 12 13 because um I was having uh, steroids and I was gaining weight, so I thought that I'm uh, because I'm so chubby. That's why people are not calling me or uh, not being friends with me. That's why. But it's not. It was not something like that. But yeah, I. It was a little bit saddening for me, but like I recovered. Oh my God, stunning. Ah, uh, which you know, uh, I think when I wouldn't be included. i would try to overcompensate in other ways um like i don't know i would probably do more of indoor games or i would play table tennis or i would uh, get into music so when you were when certain th- certain aspects of your life like for example sports in under the sun a lot of things cut down right how did you and there's an emptiness that you can feel because a certain part of it is taken off How did you? What did you replace that emptiness with? What were your uh, um, substitutes as a child? Yeah. So because I couldn't do sports at all, even when I was not diagnosed with lupus, I didn't like sports that much. But yeah, after being diagnosed with uh, lupus, it became uh, like I couldn't run and uh, like do other sports. But uh, because of that, uh, I pl- replaced it with my because I like to dub. and i want to be a dubbing artist so i um i like um, do some dubbing and voice overs and like i replace it with, with my hobbies and yeah and i never even like doing sports so it didn't uh, affect know, actually me. i think that's probably early signs of symptom uh, lupus like when i was uh, uh, i think till i was around 7 i was one of the fastest runners in my class i came oh. with tro- trophies and all that yeah And oh, wow. after that, I suddenly lost interest. And my my sports teacher used to think I'm very lazy. <laughs> and to an extent, even I thought I was lazy. I was like, why am I lazy? I don't know, right? 
and uh, I just didn't like to do sports. I would only sit if there was a tree in my uh, near my school ground. I just sit under the tree. I hated the sun. Or in retrospection, these were the early symptoms. Did you have any of these symptoms when you yes. think back? I started feel even same like you. I was having fatigue, and I thought that I'm really lazy. Uh, be, even before, like uh, when I was like eleven, and at that age, I was not diagnosed at, with lupus. So whenever I used to come uh, from my school, I used to throw my bag and like lie down on the bed, and <laughs> and like um, my, even my mom used to think like, why is she so lazy? And uh, uh, so even I, uh, yeah, the same thing as you. I was being, I was having fatigue from that age. Jen. Oh, same, same. And I would come back from school, and it was like the the sun. The sun would like drain me. It would kill me. And uh, I would just come back, uh, uh, you know, to my house, and I'd just just sleep for hours. And I would not feel like eating any food. So lunch would be left over like that. Very bad eating habits. Did you have those too? Yes, I completely lost uh, like my. Uh, Right. Appetite, I would say, and uh, like I didn't feel like eating anything, and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, even same like you, I skipped my lunch and didn't eat anything, and same as you. Acha, uh, yeah, but just I have a question for you. Sure. Uh, yeah, did you face uh, your body insecurities or insecurities about looks at your teenage years because of the medications? Nice question. Uh, <laughs> so, firstly, I was a very, uh, in general, I think we all have insecurities. I was pretty insecure in general. Even now, I absolutely am. So, to answer your oh. question about body image, right? So, I was then I was put on steroids, and suddenly, oh my God, my, I, if I, maybe I'll try to place an image in this video. My face was exactly like a, exactly like a moon, three sixty. It was like. And swollen and round, and I I literally lost the shape. So obviously I would uh, you know uh, try to do something funky with my hair. Either I'll try to color it or I'll do a funky haircut. Uh, and I was I was pretty conscious about it definitely. But I was constantly told at home you know that uh, life is way more than how you look. Watches we have to focus on your health. Uh, you, you know like. Like don't like we barely spoke about looks. Like I remember uh, once a relative came home and just said, "Oh my God, what's this? You're looking so swollen. You're looking so round." And I remember my uh, my dad gently hinted to them, saying, "You know, uh, why do you want to talk so much about physical appearance? You can talk about so many other things." So <laughs> you got my point, right? Yes, uh, that was obviously there. And when there was hair loss, I remember telling my dermatologist, you know. Um, I don't want to lose hair. Do something about my hair at least. He said, "See, there are hair vitamins that I can give you, but ultimately it depends on the lupus and the treatment. So if you're on cyclophosphamide and all, you're bound to lose hair." There were insecurities. I'm not even now. There are definitely, um, but I'm confident to say I'm insecure. And uh, there are full of stretch marks, rashes on my hips, wherever uh, and wherever I've had the surgery, all that and all. Um, but it it's been a journey to accept that you know and 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 i don't uh, get to have get to bother about looks so someone says now watch as you have gorgeous hair i know that tomorrow if i have an infusion it will go so yes. there, there is a level of detachment how about you you told me you you remember the steroid phase how did you handle that Okay, so first, when I was not diagnosed with lupus, I was really skinny, like really skinny. And after I got li- diagnosed with lupus and like started taking steroids, I suddenly started gaining weight. I gained about ten kgs, I guess. Oh, this, yeah. So yeah, so I was really insecure and like I even I remember I started dieting. At an age of twelve, I started dieting, and I and I, I I do not recommend this to anyone. But like I tried many crash dry diets, and I started I did gain, lose some weight, and I again regained it, and it did affect my health a lot. Like my rheumatologist was really angry with me, honestly. And I'm sure it had a lot of repercussions on your health, right? Uh, yeah, it did. It did. 
yeah like after being so, uh, on a crash diet and taking so many medicines like it affected my health a lot but like i didn't uh, had that much of uh, health issues but yeah i started losing my hair and again and everything i do not recommend this to anyone like i would never do this but no, no but you know since you told me this i am suddenly getting some memories okay so uh when i mm-hmm. was on a lot of dose of steroids again i was on a very high dose of so very high for long term more than most patients are even now i am on steroids after 8 years uh yeah i remember uh trying to uh, actually work out so i would try to do, go for a walk and you know do that do this but it was just impossible because and that steroid dose you it's very difficult to even lose that God, I'm suddenly reminded. Yeah, I did not know how to diet. I did not have that much of knowledge, but I would try to do yoga. And it's not the yoga that you're doing for good health, but the sort of yoga that where you just want to get into shape and not about wellness, but more about looks. Yes, we do not lose weight because uh, even when we are on steroids. Yeah, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. very um, yeah it got me very uh, it it hurts that you know you had to do that but 